What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Bold N3 tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you'll learn how to get the most out of your device. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bold brand, Bold is essentially a sub-brand under Blue Smartphones, and Blue's been creating devices for well over a decade. Now, what separates Bold from Blue is that Bold phones are meant to be a bit higher end in comparison, giving us extra bonus features such as a higher refresh rate, a AMOLED display like we're getting in this situation, and also NFC. But on the other hand, they do keep things consistent with Blue's reputation of giving us some of the best prices and value out there. And the Bold N3 definitely does continue that reputation. I also want to mention as well is that Bold was kind enough to send this phone out to me to cover here on the channel. But of course, all opinions expressed in this video and other videos are completely my own. Now there's a lot of awesome features that I'm looking forward to showing you related to the Bold N3 here in this video. But I want to start off by showing you how to get a battery percentage in the upper right corner. Now you can see by default there is no percentage, but we do have a battery icon that gives us at least some sort of indication on how much charge remains in the phone. But of course, nothing's better than having an actual percentage. Now to get that percentage, we're going to pull down the shade here, go to the gear icon, which takes us over to the settings. Then from there, go to search, type in battery, and you'll see right here battery percentage. So go there, and then you'll see it right there, show battery percentage and status bar. So enable that, and then now, no matter where you are throughout the operating system, you'll now see the battery percentage in the upper right corner. And as you can see, we're now at 93%. Now heading back over to this battery settings section, there is one other thing I do wanna show you, and that's called battery saver. So with battery saver, it's a bit self-explanatory, but you're able to get more longevity out of a single charge with the device. The only catch is, is that it does shut off various background tasks and activities, and it also switches the phone into dark theme. Now you won't want to have the phone in battery saver at all times because you won't be getting the full experience here with the phone because like I said, it does kind of limit certain aspects of it. But if you are in a situation where you know you're not gonna be able to get to a charger anytime soon to replenish that battery, then battery saver certainly can be very convenient. So to enable it, just go up here, and then you can see immediately after enabling it, the phone has immediately switched over to dark theme. So for the most part, it does work normally as you'd expect. And also it is very obvious here that the refresh rate is lower. I'm assuming it's been shifted over to 60 hertz instead of that more premium 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, if you do find yourself using battery saver quite a bit, and especially if you're finding yourself using it during the same time of the day, you can set a schedule for that. So that could be helpful to you as well. And then also keep in mind too that by default, once your phone does reach 90% for the recharge, it will then turn off battery saver. Now the next thing I wanna show you is a quick and easy way to access the camera app on the Bold N3, and this is enabled by default. And all you have to do is double press on the power button. So let's do that right now. And you can see by doing that, it immediately took us over to the camera app, and there's me right there. So that's super convenient. You can do that from anywhere in the operating system as you can see, so that's certainly a great feature that's very convenient. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to take a screenshot with the Bold N3. And there's actually two different methods that I wanna show you on how to do that. So the first way to take a screenshot is to simply hold the volume down and power button for about a second. So let's give that a try right now. And as you can see, it did indeed take that screenshot. Now there is an additional way to take a screenshot and it involves swiping down three fingers, but we do have to enable that. So let's do that right now. So we'll head over to the settings. Then from there, we're gonna go down to where it says special function. And there's a lot of good stuff here in this special functions area. And I'll show you some of these other things next. But you can see right there, three finger screenshot, swipe down with three fingers to take a screenshot. So we'll enable that. And then now when you take three fingers and you swipe down, it does indeed capture the screenshot and very quickly too. But back over in the special functions area, some of these I have already shown you, such as quickly open camera. So again, you just double press on that power button to do that. But the next one that I wanna show you is called double tap to wake up. So we'll enable that. And then basically when the display is off here on the phone, if you double tap, it will wake up the display. And then from there, you can see your various notifications. Now, another option over here is new message bright screen. So I'm not gonna demonstrate this one, but you can see it right here. Getting a new message will turn on the screen when it is off. 
So I think for a lot of people, they don't actually want that to be the case because then your phone screen will be constantly turning on anytime you get a new message. But if you want that, then there it is. Now this other one here is called side application bar. This is really cool, so make sure that's enabled. But basically swipe in from the left or right edge of the screen when you're in an app and pause. And then from there, you'll have a dock. So for this demonstration, I'm going to open up Chrome. And then from here, we'll swipe over, but keep your finger on the display, and you can see that by kind of slowly swiping over like that, we now get this sidebar that pops up. Now we do have access to some pre-curated applications. However, you can go to these three squares here at the bottom, and then from there, you can access all the various apps on your phone. So basically what this allows you to do is to go to any app on the device without actually leaving the current app that you're in. So now with this opened up, we'll pull up the calculator app to demonstrate switching over, and there you go, and then Let's say I want to use this feature again. You swipe over like that once again, and then you can see right there, you can easily access any app. Also then from here, you can go to the plus button and then pick any of these apps to throw into the sidebar, or if you want to remove some of the apps that are there already, you can do that too. Also, if you're curious how to do split screen, to do this, you're going to go to your recent apps, which is this button down here. Then you're going to pick the first app you want to split. So you'll hold down on the logo, and then from there you can see split top, go there, and then you can pick another recent app for the other application for the other half of the split. So I'll choose Chrome in this situation, and you can see right there, it now has an even 50-50 split, and then have one of the apps completely take over, then you can drag one way or the other, and then just like that, we're now at a split screen. Now with the Bold N3, we do get the regular traditional Android three button navigation down here at the bottom, but if you do prefer gesture navigation instead, or if you want to give it a try, then you actually do have the ability to switch over to that. So let me show you how to make that switch. So we're going to pull down the shade here, go to the settings, then from there, go to search, type in nav, and you'll see right there navigation bar. So go there. Now the first thing we have here is actually the option to switch around the layout of the bottom buttons. So if you prefer to have the back button on the right side and recent apps on the left, you can actually make that switch very easily. But also you can see up here that we do have the option to switch over to gesture navigation. So once you go there, you'll see that we now have a small line here at the bottom of the display. So swiping up takes us home, swiping partially up takes us to our recent apps, and then swiping from the side takes us back. So I wouldn't necessarily say that one method of navigation is better or worse than another, but at least you have the option here to pick what you best prefer. Now one of my favorite aspects of the Bold N3 is the display that we're getting here. So it's an excellent looking 6.78 inch display. It is AMOLED and it does feature a 120 hertz refresh rate and it is 1080p in resolution. So an excellent display panel and then having that fast refresh rate is a great premium feature. Now you might wanna double check though and actually make sure that that fast refresh rate is indeed enabled because in some situations it might not be. So what we'll be doing is going over to the settings and then heading over to display settings and then over here, there's a lot of different options, but one of those that I wanna point out first is called screen refresh rate. So we'll go there, and you can see that actually my phone right now is set to dynamic. So sometimes it'll run at 60 hertz, and then sometimes it'll run at 120 hertz. And if you wanna switch it over to standard instead and always have it be at 60 hertz, you will save some battery life on the phone. But if you want it to always be at that 120 hertz refresh rate, you can force it to always be in that mode. So at 120 hertz, again, things run really smoothly here. Essentially, it's a faster refresh rate for all the various animations on the phone. So that's certainly a great thing. And if your phone is stuck in the standard and you haven't even tried a faster refresh rate, then I definitely do recommend at least trying it. But then heading back over to the display settings, you can see with an option here for dark theme, or if you want, you can have it switch between the two, light and dark based on the time of day. But we'll switch over to dark theme right now and you can see it looks way different. That's definitely there useful when you're in a movie theater, for example, or maybe some other dark place. So that's nice if you prefer that. Also, we have night light here. So with night light, it'll make your screen amber. This makes it easier to read or look at your screen in a dim light. And it also might help you when it gets closer to bedtime. So you can enable that. You can also pick the time of day you want it to be. So you can pick a schedule. You can also have it activate and deactivate based on the sunset and sunrise. Or you can pick a precise time right there. So overall, that can be a very useful feature. Now edge lighting, I couldn't really figure this one out, but basically you can choose colors to light up the edges of the phone, and then you can pick an app to go along with it. 
I believe this is related to if you get a notification. So for example, if you set it for your messages and then you get a message that comes in, then you will get some sort of glow here on the sides of the phone. There's also always on display. So if you want the display to pretty much always show the time or anything like that, you can enable that. And I'll apply that right now. And then now I'll turn off the display. And this is kind of tough to show on camera, but you can see the always on display is working right now. It is showing the time despite the display being off. We also have color mode and temperature, so you can really set things to exactly how you want it to be. You can have the display be warmer or cooler. You can also have it be less vivid if you want. So that's great. Definitely recommend trying that out and kind of setting things to what you prefer. You can also adjust the screen timeout time. Now I did switch this over to 10 minutes because I've been making a lot of videos about the phone. But you can have it be lower at 15 seconds or 30 seconds or kind of pick a different number of minutes based on what your personal preference is. And then there's also a lot of different options here for the home screen. So you can pick the icon size. You can also pick whether or not you want there to be an app drawer. You can adjust if you want there to be notification dots or not. So a lot of different modifications that you can make here. There's even an option for an easy launcher. So maybe something better for people who are not too experienced with technology. So definitely a lot of different settings there related to the home screen that you might wanna kind of take a look at and adjust here. But this concludes my video on tips and tricks and hidden features for the Bold N3. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully learned something new today. But if you liked it, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.